Today, let's explore a crazy idea. Is large language model that we use for generative AI is a big zip file of the internet? Sounds crazy, but hear me out. So large language model, how is it created? Well, you take lots and lots of text from the internet, from you know, Twitter, Reddit, whoever's API is available, take you know, all kinds of books and all kinds of information and use it to build that model. And since all that information was used to train that model, it's not too crazy to think that it should be aware of all the data and it could be thought of as a compressed version of all the data that was used to train it. So in order to kind of explore that idea, we need to talk about compression. And what we have two general types of compression, uh, lossless and lossy. In lossless compression, whatever data you put into the archive is the exact same data bit for bit that you get out of it. In a, loss, in a lossy compression, the data you put into the archive isn't the exact thing that you get out, which seems kind of weird, but I'll explain. The best representation of a lossless compression is, of course, a zip file. You take some documents, you zip it up, you send it to somebody, they open it, and they, and they get back the exact same document that you sent to them. Uh, every bit that you put into the archive gets extracted exact same way. That's something we use every day, that's normal to us, and that's the expectation. So then you might be thinking, okay, well that's cool, but how could anyone be okay with losing information from the archive? What kind of archive would that be? And it's the archive you're already using. Uh, JPEG pictures or MP4 videos or any kind of videos. All those things are compressed, not necessarily archives, but they're compressed file formats and they all use lossy compression. So when you take a picture, the original pixels are present, what photographers call in a raw format. They're the original pixels. And then when you save that to a JPEG, you actually lose some of that information. When you open a JPEG and look at it, you're not looking at the original picture that was taken. That picture has been modified. And the way it's modified is some of the color information has been kind of smudged over, uh, some of the similar pixels grouped together. It's done in a way that the picture you're looking at looks almost like the original, but not quite exactly the same thing. Oh, and same thing also happens with sound. The MP3s is a compression where you don't get all the bits out after you compress them. So that's something we're already using. And this is the way we can look at large language model. So we've taken a bunch of text, we dumped it into a language model, we trained it, and now we have a question about, I don't know, a tree. So we can ask large language model to tell you something about a tree. Now the information it's going to give you isn't going to be identical to what you put in there, but it will explain to you whatever needs to be explained in just different words. So in a way, it's kind of the same lossy compression that we're already using in other types of media. And this is where we take things to extreme. We take 10 terabytes of text and squeezing it down to 140 gigabytes. And all that information is somehow preserved in that model that we can later expand and get the information out. And the process of training the model and retrieving data kind of follows what we're already doing with compression. Right? In order to compress something, we have to apply CPU cycles, right? We have to put the work in to condense the data, to, to create a zip file or JPEG. And same thing we're doing when we train the model. We put in a lot of processing power to build it. And then same way when we unzip something or we uh, decode a video, we're using CPU cycles. We're trading, basically we're trading size for CPU cycles you will. And that's what we're doing in a large language model. We need to put a lot of CPU power or GPU power, whatever you're going to do, to get that information out from such highly compressed archive. So let me know if you think that thinking of LLM as a really big, really highly compressed zip file is an interesting idea to you. It certainly made me think of things a little bit differently. 
Don't forget to follow on LinkedIn, subscribe on YouTube, and I will see you on another video.